Okay, hello everybody. Uh, uh, this class will continue uh, the theory of choices applied to individuals. <clears throat> Let me review what you have done so far. Uh, the part one is <coughs> about choices, economic choices, and we are covering the fundamentals of theory of choice, theory of economic choice. We start from the general principles of choice and let me summarize what you have touched uh, during these chapters. Okay, here. Uh, when you do make an uh, economic choice, right? Uh, let's do action. Okay. And we are uh, considering whether to A or uh, B. Okay. Let's change the color. And uh, we, uh, what the <coughs> principle says that we should consider the benefit. That A is generating versus the cost. And we, we are told that the cost should be, in economic sense, should be opportunity cost. Opportunity cost. And what's the opportunity? How do we calculate this opportunity cost? Well, there are two ways. So, the easiest way, the intuitive way, will be the resources. That is, put to use to generate A, right? Uh, it includes money time, energy, etc. Right? But the more, uh, more uh, better way to calculate this opportunity cost is to if you use resources to alternative option such as B, it will generate a benefit. Right? So, What's the cost of doing A? Well, the opportunity cost is benefit of B. So, when whether you are choosing do A uh, do or not, you should compare the benefit of A with the benefit of B. Right? And it's a quite a creative way. Uh, when you are doing, uh, when you when you are doing, when you considering doing something, you should consider not just resources, but uh, you should consider alternative options and their benefits, and you should compare different benefits that is generated by different uh, <coughs> plans, right? So this is the general principle of uh, economic choice and we have covered that. And uh, last time we talked about this theory of consumer choices, right? Applied, to, uh, uh, we applied the general principles and what consumers choose. The uh, consumer has a fixed income, right? Their budgets are fixed, so we have a budget or income, fixed income, it's a scarce, right? And we have to allocate the money into a good, several goods and services. This is alternative consumptions and we wanted to allocate our money into these activities. Now, uh, with Talk about that if we allocate, we, if we buy delta x amount of x, we'll get this much of utility. And this is the benefit of x, right? And what's the alternative action? It's y. And uh, when you put when you buy this much of X, you are uh, paying this much of money to the activity of X. 
Now, using this money, I mean, if you allocate this money into Y, you can buy this much of Y. And when you buy this, and when you're consuming it, you will get this much of utility out of it. And at the optimal consumption level, it should be equal. Otherwise, you should rearrange X and Y. And this one will be benefit of Y, right? Now, uh, if you rearrange this, we have come to the conclusion that uh, the marginal utility of X, uh, the last one dollar should be equal to uh, the last uh, the the marginal utility of y for the last dollar of last one dollar. Uh, so it is called equalization of marginal utility. So when the consumer choose uh, consumer allocate his money e wisely we have to have this equalization of uh, utility of uh, all the consumption bundles right and with this information with this information we have derived what law of demand right law of demand let me clear it but the law of demand tells you law of demand or demand law tells you that when prices goes up your demand quantity demanded should be lower, right? That's law of demand, right? And we derived uh, we derived this result where we derived this result from this equalization principles. And uh, so this is the conclusion of uh, theory of consumer choices. And uh, we'll move on to uh, theory of form choice, right? So, this class is about this uh, theory of form choice in three dimensions. Uh, this discussion will be based on chapter 13 of Mankey's principle book. Uh, chapter 13 talk about the cost of production. And chapter 14 will talk about firms in competitive markets. But uh, as you uh, see in the textbook, it's too much complicated to understand the theory of the form choice. So uh, let me let me uh, do this in my way. I usually approach the theory of form choice in three dimensions, right? And I will talk about uh, choices facing by this chief executive and then. Uh, business manager and finally as a plant manager, right? Let me put here. Okay. And then after we discuss this matter, I will talk about law of supply. Law of su supply tells you that as the price goes up, the amount of supply will increase, right? So let's start. Let's start. If you take a look at any business in the world, you can find a business organization, right? Form, for the form or company or enterprises. We have this triangle. Let me be clear. We have this hierarchy of uh, organization. Okay, we have three hierarchy, three layers, right? One layer and two layer. Now, 
we have a CEO here, right? CEO, Chief Executive. Right? And here we have, uh, usually a, a typical firm has several divisions uh, following the production lines, right? Uh, different uh, division has uh, different uh, line of product. So we have business manager, right? Sorry. We have different division, right? So it's a, a division. Let's say uh, for a food company, this is noodle division, right? This is a uh, ramen, ramen division, and this one is sauce right, division. And under the uh, so here we have whom we have a business manager. Right, there is a CEO, and there is a business manager. Right. And here is business manager. And under the business manager, uh, we have many plants, right? And one of them will be picked up. And we have plant manager that is oversighting the plant, plant manager. In each plant, we have machine so-called capital and we also have labor, the human resources. Using this capital and labor, plant manager produce sauces, ramen and noodles, right? So we have here plant manager. That's all about businesses. And let me think of uh, what the CEO do and what business manager uh, choose and what the plant manager do? Well, uh, these three agent has different problems. What CEO does? Well, he choose which business will the company go in, right? Uh, if the CEO uh, see a gloomy prospect for the source business, he will shut down this source business, right? How about the manager? Well, manager has no, uh, business manager has no authority for shutting down, right? But what kind of authority does he have? Well, under the guideline of CEO, he was put to manage this business, so he has to choose how to compete. Right? Do we sell this product as a premium good or do we sell this product as low price as possible, i.e., whether should we reduce the cost of producing this good, or uh, we should should we uh, compete based on cost, or should we uh, based on should we compete based on quality? That's the thing that this business manager should determine, right? Uh, how about the plant manager? Well, he has no authority on which business uh, to go in or how to compete. Uh, under the guidelines of this business manager, the plant manager has to product as efficient as possible. And the, uh, to do that, the plant manager has to mix capital versus labor, right? It's the all the authority that plant manager has, and uh, of course, sometimes the CEO may uh, may determine the, the combination of capital and labor, or sometimes the CEO may 
we determine uh, whether to compete with the cost advantage or quality advantage. Well, uh, different uh, enterprises, different uh, uh, organizational uh, features, let's forget about it, but just, uh, just stick in this scheme. So let's talk about the problem, starting from the problems of CEO, right? CEO. CEO. Okay, clear. The pro economic problem the CEO. And again, so what's the problem of CEO? He has to choose which business. Or, in a sense, uh, he is my second son. Uh, which business? Keep going or or shut down. Right. Well, now let's consider uh, this problem. He has alternative business plan. That is uh, X business, Y business, G business etc. Right? Now, how does he do choose among these? Right? Let's suppose that he choose Delta X. So he, he determined to produce X this amount. I mean X. Uh, uh, I mean he, he, he choose to Delta X amount of X. Right? What did happen to him? What's the benefit of doing this? Uh, just a minute. Uh, something is going on. Just a minute. Okay. Now, he choose to delta x amount of business sex and what's the benefit of this? The benefit is selling selling to the general public and how much he get? Yes, so you multiply the quantity you produce and the price you charge it and this is this will be the revenue right? by selling delta x amount of goods. Now, what's the cost or alternative benefit? Doing why? Well, let's think about the cost first. Uh, if, you, if you produce delta x amount of goods, suppose that this will make you incur C, delta C amount of cost, right? You can include time, uh, money, etc., etc. Let's imagine it, right? Uh, per unit of, let me clear, so what I'm saying is that if you if you produce delta x amount of goods and per unit you incur this much right this is the extra cost to produce delta x right so this is the money you spent on in producing uh, what? In producing delta? In producing what? In, in producing delta x, right? Now, following the same procedure, we have this, right? We have this. 
And sometimes this animal is usually called marginal cost. So let me write this one as delta x times what? Marginal cost of x. And uh, this is extra cost to produce x. Let me let me think using this money how much how many delta y will be produced? Well, if you divide this one by MCY, right? This one will indicate how much delta y will be produced. And if you multiply it by PY, this is the revenue. producing delta y and this is the benefit of going into business delta y right and uh, as a business manager as a, as a as a chief executive you have to compare this right how much i should put in in delta x business how much and uh, I should put in in delta y business. This two should be equalized, right? Equalized. And uh, in a more succinct way, let me rewrite it. Delta p x times delta x should be equal to what? Delta x m c x mcy times py now we have the same animal here so let me erase this one right and we may rearrange as we saw before right how do we re rearrange well uh, you can Right in this way. Uh, just a minute. What's going on? Right. If you move this two animal over there, so we have MCX over PX and go there. Oops. And you should invert it, right? MCY over PY. This is the uh, the way you choose the business. What does it tell? Well, you have a extra money of one dollar, right? One dollar. Where will you put? Well, if If you have something like this, your your extra money should go into business what X. If if this happens. Your, your extra money should go into business Y. Uh, so I may call it equalization of Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's reverse it. Uh, I made a mistake. You are sorry. I made a mistake. Uh, 
there was something wrong with it. You may not taste it, right? Uh, it may say the equalization of okay. I may re rearrange this one as px over mcx and the same thing py over mcy. Uh, this is the uh, revenue per dollar. And uh, from x, revenue of x, and this one is revenue from y per dollar, right? So which business are you choosing? If the revenue per dollar is higher than the other, you choose that business, right? And it makes sense, right? It makes sense. It makes sense. And if you choose well, then no matter which business you choose, you have the equalization of revenue, right? Equalization of revenue. No matter how much the cost will be, the, the revenue per dollar should be the guiding principles of your business, right? That's the way. That's the way. Yeah. And let me be... Let me clear here, right? Now, there are things that I should uh, one step will go further, right? I told you that there are two ways to calculate opportunity cost, right? Uh, one way is just calculating the resources, right? So let me, uh, and the second way is the benefit of considering alternate, uh, considering benefits of alternative action. Now, we talk about the second way. So let me turn to the first way. What's the first way? Uh, thinking of the opportunity cost in terms of resources, and it will tell you that Px delta x should be equal to delta x times mcx. This is the opportunity cost. And this is the benefit. Right? And what does it tell? Well, if you erase duplicate one, what do you have? Well, you have Px equal to mcx. What does it tell? Well, we can have two situations. Right? Now, if price of x is increased, you should produce more. Why? Because uh, producing more will incur uh, higher cost because you should buy in a hurry and uh, as you buy more oils, uh, the price will be higher, etc. Uh, we'll talk about this at the later stage. And if the price of goods will, will be smaller, you will produce less. Okay, let me talk about this event a bit here. Why is this? Let me tell you what this is all about. And uh, uh, it's appear in chapter. Uh, we are focusing on this, and uh, okay, here. 
There is something called diminishing marginal product. And uh, it's a way, uh, I mean, it's the, uh, we can express this in the in different way. It's increasing marginal cost. Right? We have a different diminishing marginal product. It's an uh, iron ore of production. Now think of a picture house. Right? And you have a, a picture uh, oven, right? And you have an uh, employees, right? Now suppose that, suppose that Suppose that, suppose that you are making this picture and the order is uh, increasing. What will you do? You will employ more people, right? As the orders are picking up. Now, you will find that the total product of a picture will keep increasing, but it will keep increasing, right? But the problem is that as you add more people, because this pizza oven is only one, the extra labor you are employing will produce pizza less than before. So the first one will, pro when there is a pitch, uh, this pizza oven, and when you first employ this uh, employee, you will produce this, you will uh, increase this much, uh, uh, this first person was employed, and you will produce this much of pizza, right? So this is the labor. Now you, your orders is increasing. So you employ another person. Labor is uh, put into uh, more. So uh, this is second person, this one, and he will of course increase the production level. But uh, this is the level that he produced, the first one produces, and uh, when this pizza house is employing extra. Uh, workers, this extra worker will add only this much, right? Now, uh, the order is still coming, so you employ another person here, and the labor is increased, and he will contribute to uh, production of the pizza. But because there is only one oven, he, he, his, uh, his addition to the pizza production will be much smaller than the first one or the second one. He only add this much, right? And this one is called, so, uh, economy is called this extra pizza, this one, and this one, and this one. These are called marginal product. Uh, sometimes it may called additional product, right? So uh, when I draw this in a picture, you may see something like this. This is marginal product uh, abbreviated as MP, marginal product. And this is the label. Then the first one is coming from this much, and the second one, this one, will be this much, and the third one, this one, will go to here, 
and the marginal product will look like this. It, it, this one is called total product, total product, and this one is called marginal product. So we have this marginal product. So why we have marginal product? Because the the counterpart of this labor, the machine is fixed in uh, in in total amount. You cannot in, when you when you cannot increase this machine capital, uh, and you only add this extra people, the extra the additional output is keep decreasing. Of course, the total product is still increasing, but the additional one is decreasing. Well. As I told you, this marginal, uh, diminishing marginal product uh, is the same as increasing marginal cost. Uh, why is it increasing marginal cost? Well, think of this uh, in this way. Now, you produced, you produce this much of what? Pizza. And for each product, for this amount, you only cost this one, right? Now you increase the extra, it increased only small, right? Than before. And but you add these people, this one. Now uh, you you increase the production more. Now the extra, the additional product is only really small, but you employ a new one, right? So this is the cost, right? Uh, this is the output. So, uh, in terms of thinking of the cost uh, in producing extra output, we may have this kind of pictures. Let me draw. Mm, it becomes messy, so let me just take time. I, I will erase. Right? Wait to your. Uh, okay. Let me, let me erase this. Oh. I always wish to, for this eraser to be much bigger. But I did not make this software. Uh, okay. That may be clear here. Okay. Uh, what am I turning? Okay. Now, suppose that here is total cost. And here is up. The picture. As the pit the the, the the, the pizza production increases. We have this machine. So we have this is the cost you pay for this machine, right? Let's say this one is M. And as you add more, the total, I mean, as you employ this one, you will have suppose that uh, when you produce this much right okay. and you will incur this much right and uh, when you uh, produce the same amount your extra cost will be much bigger, right? Why is it? Well, uh, I mean, you increase this much, but you labor, uh, you employ this person. He only contributes this, but in reverse way, to increase output, you to to increase the same output, you should employ more. So the cost should be. The P should be much higher, right? So the cost look like this. It's keep increasing. 
So if you draw the output here, and here is marginal cost, what does it look like? Well, the marginal cost will be something like starting from here. What's the marginal cost? Well, it will keep increasing. So, what I'm saying is that the increasing marginal cost uh, is the same as this diminishing marginal product, right? Uh, when you are thinking of this diminishing marginal product, you consider delta L over delta what? Y. When you consider the marginal cost, you consider what? Delta Y, delta L. This is the way thinking of this marginal cost. This is the way thinking of this marginal product. As this increase, this one decreases. So we have, if we have diminishing marginal product, you should have increasing marginal cost. Okay, let's come to our, uh, our uh, discussion previously. We previously we talk about what? Okay, let me erase this. Okay. We need. Much cleaner, right? There we go. Almost done. We are clear. Okay. Now we have discussed uh, this matter, right? This matter. When Px increases, uh, everybody knows that as produce more, it will incur higher cost. So uh, when the price increases, the producer will, will what? I mean, even though the margin, I mean, producing more will incur, uh, will increase the marginal cost because the price has been increases the producer has incentive to produce more, right? So as Px increases, what happens is that Px eventually equal to Mcx. This one will be higher too, right? Uh, so what I'm saying is that, suppose that we have this video, oh, sorry. Okay, let me have this, and this one, and this one. We have over here, right? And we also have here, right? And let's say this is the marginal cost, increasing marginal cost. And let's put here, what? Yeah. Here comes the prices. Yes. What? Marginal cost. Let me see. And here comes what? The output. Or supply. Increasing marginal cost tells you that MCA looks like this, right? Looks like this. Uh, when the uh, market price is given by this, let's say this is the market price, Px1. And let's uh, draw one more line here. And 
I dare say that I say that suppose the market price is p x one or uh, at this price the 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 CEO will choose this amount of output. Uh, it will be uh, let's say the uh, x one, right? Now suppose that uh, the price has increases and it come to become p to x. How much he will produce? Well, he will produce this much x two. Right? So what's the conclusion? We drive this law of supply and what does it tell? As the price goes up, the amount of supply will increase, right? Because the, uh, the, the enterprise can sustain uh, more output uh, because it has, even though it has a higher marginal cost, the price already gone up. So, I'm saying that this marginal cost will be the supply curve, right? So, we have this law of supply, right? Uh, let's erase everything, right? Uh, just write it down, let me erase everything. Okay. So what did we do? As a chief executive, we talk about uh, which business to choose. So we have uh, uh, what? PX, brochures, PY over MCY. And we also talk about Px should be equal to mcx, and we we, we we talk about diminishing diminishing marginal product and uh, increasing marginal cost, and as a byproduct, we have this. Law of supply, right? Now, there is one caveat here. Uh, suppose that a business firm is charging their prices as marginal cost, right? Does it imply that the firm has a positive profit? Is it? Well, it's not necessarily so. Why is it so? Why, even though we have this equalization of price versus marginal cost, why we may have loss? This profit happens, profit is considered of, I'm consisted of revenue minus cost. If this revenue is bigger than the cost, then you have a profit. However, if the revenue is less than the cost, it is making a loss. Now, when there is a business loss, you may recommend to go out out of business. Well, it's not necessarily so. Why? Because in the cost, we have fixed cost. Right? 
So we consider revenue minus the, 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 the cost is considered of two parts. One is variable cost. And the other one is fixed cost. All right. Let me let me clear here. Uh, suppose that, suppose that, okay, oh, that's the best way, that way, okay, suppose that, uh, revenue is bigger than, less than variable cost, fixed cost. No, 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 not like this. Okay. Suppose that the revenue is less than, uh, the business loss is so much, so let's say that so when the CEO is calculating the profit, he found that the revenue is less than variable cost. Right? Uh, then uh, you have to, I mean, the CEO has to de decide, get out, or keep going. What will happen if you get out? Well, you should incur fixed cost. The fixed cost, I mean, in every business, uh, in every business, sometimes you, when you open a pizza house, when you open a pizza house, you have to do what? When you open a pizza, you have to rent a building, right? And uh, it it doesn't matter whether you uh, keep uh, doing your business while getting out. You have to pay those rent, right? So getting out is not the final thing you worry. Even though you're getting out, you should pay this fixed cost. The same thing happens here. If you keep going, you should pay this fixed cost. Right? Now, but if, if you keep going, you, you, you also, what? The revenue is less than the variable cost. So you are incurring more cost than the fixed cost. What's that? Uh, that is variable cost. Some of the variable cost is covered by this revenue. Variable cost minus revenue is the extra cost you should pay to keep going. So if this happens, if the revenue is le less than the variable cost, not considering this fixed cost, if this happened, you should get out. But how about this case? The revenue is bigger than variable cost, but revenue is the less than, oh, let me, let me write it down in this way, okay. Suppose this kind of situation, you, your revenue
is bigger than this variable cost. You can pay uh, the, the employees the, uh, and the material for material cost, but it is less than total cost. What will you do in this situation? Well, let's compare two things. Keep going and get out. What's the cost you should incur? You have to pay still the fixed cost. If you keep going, you still pay this fixed cost. However, however, is there any extra cost you are you should pay? No. Actually, what happens to you? You are saving part of this fixed cost because uh, the revenue is bigger than the variable cost. Uh, even though you pay out this variable cost, you still some revenue left. So the revenue that is left to you may be used. So this one is plus actually variable cost minus revenue. This is the profit remaining after you paying this variable cost. So this one is less than the fixed cost. So what's the conclusion? Even though you are making a loss, which means that the total cost is much bigger than the, your revenue, if your revenue is bigger than the variable cost, you should keep going. Otherwise, if you close your uh, shop, you will incur huge loss. You should wait until the lease contract ended. After the lease contract ended, you definitely go, should go out. Why? This fixed cost no longer matter. Right? So why don't you go out? Uh, this is the conclusion that I made. So let me uh, summarize here. Uh, let me do clear. So let me let me summarize here. As a chief executive, you should compare these two numbers. Right? And you should equalize it. If it is bigger than this one, you should expand the business X. And we also will get for individual business, we should have this. And we have that as PX increases, because you can sustain much higher marginal cost uh, according to this uh, diminishing marginal uh, increase marginal cost, you should increase supply. Right? And the third point is that even though you are making a loss, you keep going. Under what circumstances? If the revenue is bigger than the what cost? Variable cost. And how do we calculate this revenue? Well, it calculates as P times Q. And how do we calculate this variable cost? It's oops. It's let's say W times Q. Right? As you increase more Q, so uh, this is the variable cost. What's the average variable cost? It's uh, average is W. What's the average revenue? It's uh, P. So, if this happens, if the price is, is bigger than the average variable cost, you should keep your business. But 
If the price is less than this average variable cost, you should get out of this business. Right? So as a chief executive, we finished up this choice program for the firm. Uh, let's have a pause and uh, begin again. And we'll come to this uh, discussion on business manager and plant manager. Right?